So one of the most common questions that I get is what drone are you using? What controller do you use? What goggles are you using? And I mean, if you watch the videos, you probably can sort of figure out and piece it together. But to put everything into one place, we're doing a what's in my bag video. That's today. And we've got to start us off. Jeepers. The bag. So this bag is by no means actually a FPV drone bag. I have tested an FPV drone bag and ideally I probably should actually move to one, but because I do a lot of videography and photography, like we're doing right now, we do YouTube videos, right? I like to use this bag a lot because it has everything that I need for both FPV drones and also a combo of normal drones, normal camera equipment, you know, you name it, gimbals, everything. So I use the Peak Design, I believe this is the travel bag. 40 liter, 50 liter, I don't know. It's a decent size anyways, and I've actually used this a whole lot, both for FPV and for going around overnight hikes, going traveling to Bali. This is the only bag that I took going to Bali for two weeks. So as you can see on the back here, we've got a drone, which we're gonna to get to shortly. Inside this front pocket, we've got stuff in there that we're gonna to get to. And then the third stage is when we turn the bag over, on the bottom, there's the big zip that unlocks everything. That's where the majority of my stuff is housed. But Let's start off simple, let's start off with the drone. This here is the iFlight Nazgul Evoke and I've had this drone for must be just over two years now. I've crashed this into literally everything you can imagine including a lake as well and after putting it in the oven for about six hours it came out absolutely fine. Honestly, this is an absolute powerhouse and the drone that I recommend that anybody buys. It's just got a simple DJI Caddx Air unit in there. Works the gem for me, you could upgrade it to O3 with the new frames, but I mean, why would I bother when this thing has literally taken everything that it can, it's taken a beating, and I've, I've never broken anything on it. That's the biggest part. Not one thing has been broken on this frame ever. I think I've lost the screw, and that's it. Now I have changed a few things about it, the first being these props, and this is a recent change, but holy moly, if I thought this drone was powerful before, putting these on, these are the Dell Prop Nepal, five inch propellers, I'm pretty sure that's what they're called. These are made for freestyle drones and I put this onto this drone just as a sort of test coming from your normal HQ prop, I don't know what your standard is, but whatever the sort of general one is that you put onto these drones, you know, I, I had that on. Switched over to these, which has got a much sharper pitch and holy crap, the difference is incredible. Highly recommend going with these if you do have a drone, whether it's freestyle or for cinematic use. These actually made the drone like feel like it had a whole new life in it. So amazing piece of kit to have. I've also double strapped up the battery here because well, I, I'm a terrible crasher. So two Luma battery straps up there just to make sure the battery isn't gonna go flying out. The antenna here has also been upgraded because the classic DJI one that came with it for the air unit was bendy and broke and that was the end of that. I lost my video feed, good times. Again, all comes down to crashing, bit of wear and tear. So that's pretty much everything that's actually been upgraded on it. We're running Crossfire, we've got a GPS that I still don't have set up for anything useful. And that's, that's the drone as a whole. I also run a camera on top, which we'll get to in a moment when we get into the bag. So drone aside, we're gonna move forwards and we're gonna open up the top compartment. You can probably guess what this is. I, I actually just showed you, it's a, it's a LiPo protective pouch. In here, uh, I take about six batteries and they're all 1500 milliamp hours. It's pretty much what I run. I don't find I need more than six batteries for a day out shooting. If I do, I've got more, but in reality, I just don't actually need them. I, I struggle to discharge six in a day. So always got the LiPo protective pouch because well, LiPo's kind of terrify me a little bit, but good to protect them in the case that something does happen. These batteries that I'm running though, they're all CNH, CNHL, which is China Hobby Line, I believe. A lot of people shit on these, but I actually think that they're fantastic batteries. They're really cheap. I've found that they're fairly reliable. I've never had anything go wrong with them. Although their actual life is pretty short, I would say, after abusing them for about a year, you probably need to upgrade them. But I got all these half price, so no complaints there. Moving forward into the only other thing that's actually in this front area, the Dell prop, Nepal props. I just got a spare set in here, and I was correct. They're the Nepal N2. Fantastic props, always keep a set on me in case I need to change them, and I most likely do. All right, moving on to the main compartment. So this is where things get interesting. Obviously, this whole back comes up. We do have a laptop pouch in the back here. I don't use it for FPV majority of the time. Probably should, you know, for beta flight and whatnot, but I don't. 
Now there is this compartment, which is a main camera compartment. Generally would have the camera that I'm using right now in here, along with drones for real estate work, whole bunch of different stuff there. Up here, however, right now, we've got the Radio Master Controller. Now, we pull this one out. If you don't know what controller this is, I have made a video on it before. And honestly, best controller in the world, hands down. I might upgrade one day, but right now, mwah. if you haven't seen any of the videos I've made on it though, this is the TX16S. And I've done a couple of modifications to it that make it seem more like mine, but majority of this thing is 100% stock. Nothing's been changed on it that is any significant difference or price difference. I just really love this controller. I believe this is one of the first generations too, so these hall sensor gimbals probably aren't like the most updated. Maybe they are, maybe they're not. I really couldn't tell you. All I know is that for a form factor and majority of my use cases, I swear by this thing. It's never failed me without some form of user error as such. And for a good example of that, in my previous video, the racing for 30 days, I did manage to break the gimbal. I think that was just me being rough and not using this and kind of just throwing it in here. I mean, you can see I've, I've literally broken one of the switches off already. I say already, I've had this controller for two years, but for the most part, I don't actually use the internal four in one protocol thing that it's got. For the majority of my drones, I use Crossfire. This is just a TBS Crossfire module receiver. Fits in there like a gem. So you can probably tell I've also removed the back handle because why do you need a back handle on one of these things? Nobody carries, anyways. This is how I run most of my quads because they're all TBS Crossfire. I swear by it. But on top of that, we do also have the Radio Master ELRS module. I only got that for one of my drones and quite frankly, didn't have a great setup experience with it, but I will give it time. Before we move on from the controller, however, there were two modifications that I've made. One I had to pay for, one was completely free and changed my entire experience. The first that I paid for were these, the ripsticks. I can't even explain to you how much of a difference these actually changed for my flying. The ability to consistently grip these controller sticks and just not have your finger slip off of them. They're super comfy. They're not stupidly expensive. I mean, they're a little up there, but honestly, if there's one thing you do to any controller, put ripsticks on it, 533, never look back once. The second thing that I did, however, was changing to Edge TX. Now, before I was on Open TX, which is what comes with the controller initially when I bought it, and I had no idea. How bad is this? And if you go back and watch my main video on this controller, I had no idea then either. This screen here, it's a touch screen. The fact that they even decided to put OpenTX under something which doesn't support the touch screen and made me understand that only the Mark II or whatever it is of the TX16S had the touch screen is insane. This is the first generation TX16S whatever. It's got a touch screen. Blows my mind, I had no idea about it and it's kind of changed how I use this as a whole. I love it. I think that's the thing about this, I just keep getting surprised by things like two years later after owning this. Fantastic controller, highly recommend. Okay, moving forward into potentially the most exciting part, the compartment. Don't know, uh, camera cube, that's what it's called. It's called a camera cube. This camera cube has got one, two, three, four sections in it. And again, it's mostly set up for my everyday life, my everyday putting a camera in here, a main drone, an FPV drone, etc. But when I go out for an FPV only day, this is exactly how I have it and this is exactly what I bring with me. So we're gonna start off in this front compartment here. Got a little baggie and two sets of goggles. Now, I'll get to why I have two sets in a moment, but first of all, this little baggie has antennas for this basically. That's, that's all that's in here. And now this, is the DJI V2 goggles, which has got the BDI Digidapter on the front here with the TBS Fusion module. And what this does is it all hooks up for analog. So basically, these are digital only goggles if you have no idea. These are actually the first goggles that I used to run with that Nazgul Evoke from the start. And they're fantastic goggles. All I did was simply add on this Digidapter, which basically takes an analog signal, like what the TBS Fusion module here gives out, and puts it into the goggles in an AV format so that you can fly pretty much anything analog. Super cool, I love it, and it's an easy conversion too. There is literally no wires to solder or anything, you just plug these in and you're good. A few pain in the ass features about them though is that they take a while to start up, and on top of that, the battery life is pretty crap too. You get maybe like an hour, hour and a half flying out of one of the normal batteries. 
one of these, these things, the DJI ones. Pretty mediocre, but just have a few of these around and it's okay. Moving over to my more recent pair of goggles, however, these here are the DJI Goggles 2. Not to be confused with the DJI Goggles V2, which I just had, these are the Goggles 2. Now, if you don't know what these are, these are made for running O3, but I currently run the DJI Avada, which isn't in this bag because eh, it's not part of my mostly everyday carry. But these goggles are made for the O3 unit, but I got them with the Avada. I don't even have any O3 units, so I tend to run these with the Nazgul for the Air unit, the, the original one, not the O3. On top of that, I've also upgraded to an Ethic strap, which has got a battery holder in it. Massive, massive thing for these is that when you get them, they don't have anything to hold this battery, so having this is just an absolute game changer. One thing I do want to say though is I have tried, I think every single foam out there for these goggles, and the only ones that actually fit my face and actually feel more comfortable than this original foam is the other DJI form-fitting ones which is made out of proper foam. All the iFlight ones, I think there's three of them that I've tried now, they all suck. Like seriously, no, they suck. They all have light leaks and they're just really hard, solid foam. They're not comfortable to wear and quite frankly, I've always swapped back to this, the just normal DJI foam that's on them. I don't even think it's foam, it's like rubbery stuff. Whatever this is, these are what I'm running because it's just the most comfortable, the least light leaks and quite frankly, the cheapest option. I think the other DJI ones are like 60, 70 bucks just for the foam, so we might upgrade that at some point. Right now, however, not too keen. Okay, so moving on to compartment number two, we've got some pretty exciting stuff in here. In fact, we've got another whole drone in here along with the camera system that I use as well. So the drone that I'm using is the Meteor 75 Pro. This is by Beta FPV. The reason this is in this everyday bag is not because it does great film or anything, it's just simply because it's so much damn fun and it's so small and simple to bring along with me. Like, I've got 10 batteries in here, I think, maybe even 12. I mean, check out the charger. This thing's fantastic. So all those batteries just chill in this little pouch. This thing comes along with me everywhere. That's why I have to bring the analog goggles with me though because this is what runs analog and it's also what runs ELRS. Now, that's one thing I would change if I could. If this could run Crossfire, I would happily run Crossfire. I've got no issues with it. I don't really have any issues with ELRS either, but just I didn't have a great setup, so it's kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. Not gonna shit on it though. I really need to spend some more time developing some proper opinions and utilizing it more. Apparently there's Bluetooth out of it that you can actually use your controller on a simulator with the Bluetooth from ELRS. That's insane. No cables needed, might have to try that at some point, but yeah, for now, just got ELRS on this and analog on this. Super fun drone, super easy to carry. Then the other two things that are in here are NDs and a GoPro. Now, I'm currently running the GoPro Hero 10. This is like my third Hero 10 now, I think. I've pretty much run through three of them. This might be my fourth, I'm not even too sure, but I've crashed so many times now with the Nazgul and this GoPro that, yeah, I've, I've smashed many of them. But the GoPro subscription repair works a gem, replace them every time, so that's fantastic. ND filters, these are the Freewell ND filters. Again, as you can see, I've literally only got one actual ND filter here. This is the ND32. The other thing here is just the polarizer. That's because the ND16 and the ND8 are both smashed, so it's only got the ND32 to run, basically. Kind of a pain in the ass in most scenarios, but it does the job. So yeah, this is the main powerhouse that I run for pretty much all of my video work that I'm filming with for professional use or even just YouTube here. I love the image that the GoPro gives out. Real steady works a gem. You can also use GyroFlow with it, which is free. It's just a really great all-round camera. I would upgrade to the Hero 11, but we're gonna wait until I smash this to pieces, then I'll make the upgrade. Until then, Hero 10 all day, every day. All right, compartment number three is potentially the smallest and most boring one, but it's very useful. This is a high-powered power bank. 10,000 milliamp hours as well, which is kind of freaking insane for something this size and this weight. It's got power delivery, so it boosts out, I think it's like 18 watt of charging, which for the majority of things will help fast charge them, which is fantastic. I utilize this a lot when I have to charge up like my Mavic drones or my mini drone, or even the batteries for the Meteor 75 Pro. Super simple to have along. This charges up for hours upon hours for the Meteor 75 Pro. Just plug in USB-C, plug in a little Beta FPV USB-C charger, and then you're charging your batteries on the go. So moving on to the fourth and final compartment with my bag, we've got the tools and the essential stuff that I bring along pretty much on every single shoot that I go to, whether that's you know just for YouTube again or for professional shoots or just for a day out flying. Doesn't even have to be a shoot. This one I probably should have mentioned straight off the bat. This is the Luma controller strap. 
Now, the reason why I mention that as Luma specifically is because the length of this to hold your controller out at is perfect. Like, this is at its, I think, shortest length, and it is absolutely perfect for me. You can extend it out further if you prefer to have your hands down further whilst you're actually flying, but the previous one that I had was an Emacs one, and that quite simply was really short. So you'd have it like up here. I mean, you, you can sort of see like just the, the, the way you got to hold it is just kind of awkward, and I don't know, it's kind of useless in my opinion when you get something like this. It is an assistive piece of equipment that is actually essential to me flying when I don't have a strap. I kind of can't hold the controller without sitting down and it does screw with my flying. Anyways, the final thing that we've actually got is this DJI goggles bag. Now this normally houses the goggles V2, but with the BDI adapter, it doesn't fit them anymore, so I've had to scrap that. Instead, this is actually a toolkit. If I pull out everything that's in this little toolkit, you'll see there's, is that everything? Oh, there we go. So as you can see, there's actually not that much to this entire toolkit. I've got a soldering iron, screwdriver, solder, flux, that's a big one, we'll get to that in a second, a smoke stopper, a, what is this thing called, a prop tool, the cable for the soldering iron, a set of pliers, even though I probably don't need it because I've got the multi-tool, and a spare strap, Luma, Luma strap. Now I honestly cannot remember what the hell this thing is called, and that's kind of the case with the majority of my gear, I don't really know what it's called, but it works a gem. It's tiny, I've never had a soldering iron this small, and the best part is it literally plugs in via USB-C, and then this here plugs into potentially my power bank, which has got power delivery in it, or my laptop, starts it up, and now I can solder whilst out and about. It's perfect. This is a silicon cable too, by the way, so it won't burn. It comes with this. Moving over, you've then got this little 4-in-1 hex driver kit. Honestly, this is super duper cheap, and it feels pretty crappy but I've never had any issues with it. I haven't actually managed to burr out any of the ends, and I've used it a fair amount now, so it does the job. Wouldn't necessarily recommend it. If you can get better ones, go get better ones, but hey, it's compact, it's small, and it does a great job. We've then got the TBS solder, which is pretty simple, it's, it's solder. But this one, goddamn, I didn't even have this one for so long. This is the TBS flux, but you could get literally any form of flux. If you don't know what flux does, holy crap, this thing's a life changer. When you're trying to solder, you put a little bit of flux on it, and it just, it just makes things freaking go, man. I don't even know. It's like a conductive thing. Technical. From what I understand, it pretty much just helps the tip of the soldering iron connect more with the solder, making it melt faster and hotter, and therefore providing a better connection. Please tell me if I'm wrong. Then we've got something that's a new addition. This is a smoke stopper. Now, I haven't actually had one of these before, but I kind of figured I should because, well, quite simply, my soldering skills, I probably should have had one of these for my first racing build. I didn't, so this was kind of a new addition, but this, goddamn, this is one of the first pieces of kit that I actually ever bought for my toolbox, and it is just the iFlight prop tool. Now, the thing that makes this thing actually useful is not the fact that it's got two hex things on it, which I could use. It all comes down to the little ratchet system that it's got inside. This little ratchet system allows it so that when you're taking the props on and off, you don't have to continually twist, take off, put back on, twist, take off, put back on. You just literally move it back and forth. Really easy to use and it wasn't too expensive and it's never broken on me. Now it is worth mentioning if you do want to purchase any of the equipment today, I put a specific list down in the description box below which has got every piece of gear that I just talked about. Some of those links are affiliate links which means I make a small chunk of change off of it. Keeps the channel going so thank you if you do decide to support me that way. Otherwise before I get too pitchy on you, go and watch this video here and watch me race 30 days straight. It's actually a pretty damn emotional video if I say so myself.